All right, fellow Earthlings. Today we're diving into the cosmic pool of energetic boundaries. Now don't worry, this isn't some woo-woo crystal gazing seminar. I'm talking about practical magic, the kind that keeps you from feeling like a human sponge in a world full of emotional spillages. Yeah, I learned this stuff the hard way and let me tell you, it's like figuring out you're allergic to cats after adopting five of them. First off, let's demystify this whole energetic boundary thing. Imagine it's like having an invisible force field around you, not the kind that stops bullets, but the kind that keeps you from soaking up your neighbor's drama or your boss's bad vibes. It's for anyone who's ever felt like they're a walking, talking mood ring, changing colors with every person they meet. Picture this, you're minding your business and suddenly you're hit by a wave of emotions. And nope, it's not your midlife crisis kicking in early. It's someone else's energy creeping into your personal space. Before you know it, you're like a walking diary of everyone else's feelings. Not fun, right? According to principles derived from Eastern energetic anatomy, sometimes referred to as subtle anatomy, there is a field of energy that surrounds all matter, living and non-living. Briefly stated, the energy surrounding the human body is often referred to as the human energy field. In this worldview, there are layers of energy surrounding our bodies, with the outermost layer being less permeable than the other layers. This gives the energy field its structure and boundaries, resembling that of an eggshell. Therefore, when we speak about energetic boundaries, we're referring to our own energy field remaining free from picking up on other people's subtle energy and having an effect on us by penetrating our personal energy field. There are several books available that go more in depth describing the human energy field, a personal favorite being Hands of Light by Barbara Brennan. We human beings, like other animals, are designed to feel our surroundings for survival purposes. We often pick up on what others are feeling, so we can sense if the situation we're in is safe and what we need to do to adapt to the present circumstances. Imagine you're in a cheerful mood and you walk into a room where you could cut the tension with a knife, even though nobody is speaking. The tense feelings coming from other people are palpable. Ever happened to you before? In such circumstances, it would be a common response to pick up on other people's tension and embody that. Now I know what you're thinking, but I don't want to be the bad guy who sets boundaries. I'm not trying to break hearts here. Relax. It's not about being a boundary bully. It's about knowing your personal no trespassing signs. Setting boundaries isn't about closing doors. It's more like setting up the coolest VIP lounge where only the best vibes are allowed. It's not being selfish. It's more like self-preservation. It's like saying, hey, this is my dance space. That's yours, a la dirty dancing. Why are maintaining boundaries so important? If you can't affirm your boundaries, it will be difficult to trust your ability to maintain your own truth, whether it's your mood, your beliefs, or your circumstances, while at the same time being present and responding to other people. There's also a good chance that if you have weak boundaries, you'll be uncertain if you're picking up on another person's feelings or tapping into your own issues. For example, are you feeling angry because the cashier at the store was crabby when you were buying your groceries? Or is it because something is happening in your life that is causing you to feel that way? Here are four signs that you may have lost your boundaries. One, when what you're feeling is not matching your current circumstances. Two, when you become confused about a topic and merge with other people and their issues. Three, when you experience a sudden shift in emotion or sensation. Four, when you lose your certainty about a truth you firmly believe in. So how do you set these mystical boundaries? It's like feng shui for your soul. You gotta know where your emotional furniture ends and where someone else's begins. It's not about building walls. It's about drawing lines in the cosmic sand. So let's sift through these nuggets of wisdom like we're hunting for Easter eggs in a Marvel movie. First up, the frame technique. No, it's not about hanging pictures. It's about creating mental space between you and the energy vampires. This gem is brought to you by none other than the YouTube maestro Aaron Dowie. I'll drop a link to his video in the description because sharing is caring. It's basically just a technique where you breathe and you put the separation between yourself and the object, and this really helps you ground into your body. 
It also helps you come back into your body and to see yourself and the other person as separate, so you stop feeling the energies of other people. Now let's break it down. Imagine you've got an object in front of you. Let's say a water bottle, because hydration is key, folks. You take a deep inhale and focus hard on the difference between you and Mr. Water Bottle. It's like creating an invisible bubble. The bottle's just chilling there, minding its business, and you're focusing on the separation between yourself and the object. And this really helps you ground into your body. It helps you come back into your body. Then on the exhale, you shift your attention to the space around you. Focus on the peripheral, and you focus on the energy between you and the space between yourself and the object. It's like expanding your kingdom, but without the medieval drama. You're basically telling the universe, this is my bubble, and I'm the queen or king of it. Aaron suggests doing this for about five or 10 minutes a day. And let me tell you, it's like yoga for your personal boundaries. I've been riding this technique like a skateboard. Sometimes I wipe out, but most of the time, it's a smooth ride. So, if you're an empath who feels like a sponge in a sea of emotions, give this technique a whirl. You'll start feeling less like a human mood ring and more like the emotionally stable rock star you were always meant to be. And remember, practice makes perfect, or at least good enough to avoid feeling like you're in an emotional episode of Stranger Things. Another pro tip is to harness the power of presence. Ever been so engrossed in a task that you forgot the world around you? That's what we're aiming for. When you're fully in the moment, you're like an energetic ninja dodging unwanted vibes and staying true to your vibe. Being present isn't just about mindfulness. It's your secret weapon against emotional freeloaders. See, the trouble with flimsy energetic boundaries is that we're often all over the place, mentally that is. We're not really here in the now. Our minds are on a world tour, minus the fun and souvenirs. That's where something like the frame technique comes into play. It's like a mental camera focus, pulling your scattered energy back into a sharp centered state. Think of it as honing your attention like a laser beam. When it's pointed right where you are, that's when you're setting up some solid boundaries. Then there's the magic of doing what you love. When you're diving headfirst into your passions, be it painting, strumming the guitar, or unleashing your inner Gordon Ramsay in the kitchen. You're essentially crafting an energetic fortress around yourself. It's like being in your own bubble where the only thing that matters is your joy, your passion, your creativity. That's why following your excitement should be one of your life's priorities. Because when you find yourself being authentic, doing what you truly enjoy and love, you lose yourself in the flow state so deeply that the outside world static just can't penetrate. When I started doing a lot of inner work, healing and meditation, one of my exercises is my next tip, and it was to focus on the word no, and all that word meant to me. This is kind of from the whole, remove that which does not spark joy mentality for this exercise, and thought of all the things I have, can, and will say no to. Now, whenever small talk goes beyond the usual pleasantries, I visualize small talk going in a box labeled no, and then dropping the box into a river. After that, if they're still going, I just walk off with a smile on my face. Rude. Kinda. But man, you can't beat a brick wall for a boundary. Next up, visualize yourself as the bouncer of your own club. Club me. Remember times you should have said no, but didn't? Those moments when you should have stood up for yourself, but didn't? Now rewind those scenes in your mind's theater and recast yourself as the lead who fearlessly stands their ground. You correct yourself in your mind all the time. How would it have played out if you had spoken up? How you wish you had behaved? What would you wish you had done? What would you wish you had felt or said? Visualize yourself asserting your boundaries with confidence. By mentally rehearsing these director's cut versions of your life, you're essentially training your brain to adopt this new role the one where you're the champion of your own story, the hero who knows their worth and isn't afraid to defend it. Here's a bonus tip for those extra tough days, the mirror technique. Imagine a reflective shield around you, bouncing off any bad juju. When you sense someone's energy zooming in your direction and it's not your cup of tea, just visualize a mirror encasing you. It's like having an invisible Wonder Woman bracelet, but all around you. 
This mirror isn't just for checking out your fabulous reflection. It's your energetic bouncer. Any unwanted vibes heading your way hit this mirror and either boomerang back to the sender or simply fizzle out. I stumbled upon this method organically, and guess what? It turns out shamans have been using this trick for ages. It's like emotional judo, using their energy against them. And hey, if you end up reflecting some positivity back, that's a win-win. Remember, setting boundaries isn't about shutting the world out. It's about letting the real you shine through. It's about saying, hey, I'm the DJ of my emotional playlist. And right now, I'm not taking requests. So go on, set those boundaries, and watch as you transform from an emotional sponge into an energetic rock star. And don't forget to hit that like button. It's the one boundary I'm totally cool with you crossing. Peace out.